Welcome to Daily Living with Father Chapin, where we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Yes, my friend, that's what we do. Sometimes the Bible can be a bit confusing, so we bust it down like a fraction. We're asking questions along the way. Questions like, hey, what do these Gospels have to do with me? That's what I want to know. How can I take these Gospels? They come to me each and every week and apply them into my daily living so that I can become, well, a reflection of God's love to a world, let's face it, don't know God for sure, and definitely is in deep need of more love. Don't you think? I mean, take a look around, my friend. There's a lot of bad news bears out there. How can I take the good news of Jesus Christ and apply it into my daily living so that I can become a light in that darkness? I want to be a tool in the hand of God, making present His kingdom. Not someday, but today and every day. And that's what this show is all about. And I'm so glad that you could join us today. Oh, we have a powerful show today. As we come to the very end of yet another liturgical year. Oh yes, we are moving from cycle A, which is Matthew, to cycle B, which is Luke. Starting next week is Advent. Can you believe it? But the church chooses a very special gospel to crescendo the year, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. It is coming from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me, ill, and you cared for me, in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. A stranger, you gave me no welcome. Naked, you gave me no clothing. Ill or in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, while the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. And what a gospel it is, my friend. Oh, yeah. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. You stick around. We're going to talk about this gospel and a few other things along the way here as we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Welcome back to Daily Living. So every Sunday throughout this country, preachers or priests or ministers will rise and go to the podium. They'll open up the good book, read a few lines, maybe even a paragraph. 
and then proceed to tell you exactly what they believe it's saying. Now, in some congregations, it may be brief. In others, it could go on for an hour. I'm not exactly sure how long I go. I've never really timed it because way I figure it doesn't really matter. A good homily is always too short and a bad homily is always too long. But I must say that as these presentations are being given, the vast majority of Christians who are sitting in the pews listening will have not read the scripture in question for themselves. I have heard it said, why should I read the Bible? Father Sheridan tells me everything I need to know about it, right? This is a prevailing thought to many Christians. As a result, the sound bite of scripture that you hear on Sunday, this thimbleful, is what a majority of professed Christians live on from week to week. Now, maybe what the preacher said, or the priest, or the minister, maybe what they said, maybe it hits home, maybe it doesn't. My guess is that if you were to ask them on a Tuesday, hey, what was the message all about on Sunday? More than half would probably say, I don't know. Now, I say all of that to say this. If you really do believe in eternal life, if you believe that the good news, scriptures that you hear a little bit about on Sunday, that they're the key or at least the very doorway to the possibility of that eternal life, seems to get the short shift, don't you think? I mean, really, certainly doesn't seem to have much emphasis in the typical life of a Christian. But today we're going to talk about a subject that is not real popular. And that is the subject of judgment. It's a cold, prickly word. We don't like it. Christianity, particularly Western Christianity, loves to hear about the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. And that is true. Loves to hear about the joy and the peace and the, and the goodwill towards men as we build our nativity scenes, you know, if that's legal. That's what we want to hear about. We don't want to hear about judgment. Even though the Bible discusses judgment with great frequency, people don't want to hear it. I'm telling you, you want to be a killjoy on Sunday morning? Step up to the podium, start talking about hell. See how that works out for you. Somewhere back in the 90s, a book was written entitled Embraced by the Light. It was on the New York Times bestseller list for 40 weeks. And the book was about a woman who died during surgery. She goes to heaven and then comes back to life. And she talks about the fact that while she was in heaven on her visit, Jesus never said or wanted to do anything that might upset her. She describes Jesus as almost a happy tour guide. Now, as you might imagine, this book was very popular. And it remains a very popular theology. Trust me, it fills stadiums. God loves you, wants to bless you. And if you write me a check, he will love you and bless you more, okay? But when we look at the scripture, it is true that we read about a gracious and merciful and loving God. But we also read in the scriptures about judgment. The one thing that the Bible makes very clear is that all of us have a fallen nature. That means we're sinners. The Bible makes very clear that we are responsible for our sin nature that comes out of the fall. Not just the collective failings of humanity, but our personal failings as well. We don't get to blame it on the devil. We don't get to blame it on the excesses of a sparkly world. We can't say we were tricked. There was not a misunderstanding. There are no mitigating circumstances, no excuses, Judgment Day. It comes from you. It comes from me. We might not want to talk about it, but the Bible makes it very clear that there will be a day of judgment. I mean, think about it. If there was not a day of judgment, then God would be, by definition, an unjust God. My friends, we live in a world where life can be extremely unfair at times. And it seems that wickedness prevails as it rules the day. And this is what our gospel addresses today. Judgment. Sheep and goats 
life or death, heaven or hell. Pretty clear, pretty sobering. Jesus says, whoever comes to me will never be driven away. And that is true. That is what he said. All are welcome. But those who do not, they will go somewhere else. And that's what we're talking about today. Now, if you've been with us for the last several weeks, you would know that we've been talking all about the end of the world. That's because every year, as the church winds down yet another liturgical year, we revisit this subject, the end of the world, also known as the eschaton or the apocalypse. And it all started about a month ago when Jesus was walking out of the great temple for the last time, and he knows it. And his disciples are looking back at the beauty of the temple, gazing at the wonder of it all. And Jesus says, not one stone, not one stone will be left upon another. And they're shocked. And this is where the whole thing turns. And over the last several weeks, we've moved through the unfaithful servant. Remember him? The master was delayed. So what does he do? He gets drunk and starts to beat his fellow servants and maid servants, and then the master shows up. Didn't work out so well for that guy, right? By the way, we are living in that delay right now. Just saying. Then we have the five wise and the five foolish virgins. Five were prepared and five lacked something. What they lacked was the oil. We talked all about that. What was that oil? Then we have the talents. That was last week. A man goes on a journey and he entrusts his property to three people. The first two doubles his money. Third guy does nothing. So these last three weeks, Actually, the last month, it's been kind of like a symphony, gaining steam, gaining momentum, building to the ultimate crescendo, the crashing of the cymbals, the tippanies, the kettle drums are rolling, they're going all out, and then boom, the final note. My friends, that is what our gospel is today. It's the final note. Sheep and goats. Life or death, heaven or hell. And it is fitting because today we are at the last day of the liturgical year. We call it Christ the King. Sheep and goats. Sheep to his right, goats to his left. Life or death, heaven or hell. And you know, it's interesting because according to this gospel, there are only two kinds of people in this world. Just two. Think about that. You are either a sheep or you as a goat, period. That's it. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room here, my friends. Two types of people. Now you think about how many groups we ourselves divide ourselves up into. I mean, way more than two, right? We are horribly divided, whether it's race or whether it's politics or whether it's pro-life or pro-abortion or I'm a liberal or I'm a conservative or I'm a moderate. Need I go on? I mean, just consider the body of Christ, my friend. Christianity has split into over 40,000 denominations. Think of that, 40,000. Let's talk about one. How about Catholicism? That, that's what I'm a part of, okay? Within our one denomination, we got the pre-Vatican IIs, we got the post-Vatican IIs, we got the kneelers, we got the standers, we got the receive on the tongue, we got the receive on the hand. I mean, we got division within the division. But in the end, Jesus is making it very clear that despite all the divisions and all the different groups that we divide ourselves up into, in the end, it comes down to two. You are either a sheep or a goat. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. You stick around. We'll be right back, and we will continue to talk about this amazing gospel that comes to us here as we consider God's Word, and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living with Father Chapin. It is such a pleasure to be able to come into your home each and every week and share the good news. But it's a bit expensive. So at the end of the broadcast, we're rolling out a new program of partnership. I'd ask you to grab a piece of paper and a pencil so that maybe you can jot it down and consider it. But what do you say we just get right on back to the show? 
Welcome back to Daily Living. Now, just for the break, we were talking about the fact that in the end, there's really only two types of people. You're either a sheep or you're a goat. Now, I imagine if I could look through this television set and say, raise your hand if you're a goat, I'm probably not going to get a lot of takers on that one because I think most of us feel like we're on the sheep team, right? Aren't we? Well, what's the difference between a sheep and a goat? Because whatever it is, we need to find out because it's obviously important. One could say, in fact, that it's a matter of life or death. What distinguishes a goat from a sheep? Well, I've read that sheep can be led while goats cannot be led, and, and I suppose there's some sense in that, but do you think that that's really what Jesus was trying to get at? What is it that a sheep has that a goat seems to be missing? Well, remember, I, I've said many times that Scripture explains Scripture. And there are many, many areas of the Bible that talk about judgment, and one of them is the wheat and the weeds, okay? It's also known as the wheat and the tares. And remember when we talked about the wheat and the weeds, we talked about a particular weed called a darnel. And a darnel looks exactly like a stalk of wheat. But when the stalk of wheat sprouts an ear of grain, the weight of the grain will cause it to droop over. So you see how it flops over, that's the weight of the grain. Now, a darnel produces nothing. Even though it looks exactly like a stalk of wheat, it produces nothing. As a result, it stands tall, arrogantly, in the wind, like a lot of people, right? Jesus makes the point that they will grow together. And only at the end of the age will the angels separate them. So this could be a clue. Seems like the difference between the wheat and the weeds, or, or, or the sheep and the goats, is what they produce. John the Baptist talks about this. Even now, the axe lay at the root of the tree, ready to cut down the tree that does not bear fruit, and cast it into the fire. Okay, Jesus says, good trees cannot bear bad fruit, and bad trees cannot produce Good fruit. So given the fact that both John the Baptist and Jesus warn about this bad fruit and the difference between the wheat and the weeds and the sheep and the goats seems to be fruit, what is the fruit? Well, according to our gospel today, it's giving food to the hungry. It's water to the thirsty. It's clothing the naked. It's welcoming the stranger. It's visiting the sick, visiting the prisoner. Which brings us back to a really old argument that they have been screaming at each other about since the first century. Is it by faith or works that one is saved? In other words, if we do a lot of really, really good things, can we earn our stairway to heaven? Is there some kind of karma scale in the sky that if you do some bad things, you can make up for it by doing a lot of really good things to kind of balance out the karma scale. This theology can be summed up by a bumper sticker. Jesus is coming, look busy, right? So what to do? What is our gospel telling us today? How can we apply this into our daily living? What were those five foolish virgins missing? What was the man who buried his talent guilty of? Remember the guy at the wedding feast who didn't have the proper wedding garment? What was that all about? He was cast into the outer darkness. There was wailing and gnashing of teeth. So we, we better find out. What was he missing? Well, what the five foolish virgins were lacking, what the man bearing his talent was missing, what the guy at the wedding feast did not have, what seems to define the difference between a sheep and and a goat can be found in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. I mean, it's all right there. In fact, you know what? While we're talking about it, you might want to read the 14th chapter of John. It's not long. It'll change your life if you let it. Jesus is leaving his disciples. 
He's going where, at least for the time, they cannot follow. What does he say? He says, I will not leave you orphans. I will send you the promise of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth that will guide you in all things. Now, I want you to open up your mind really wide and hear this, okay? Because this explains a lot of things. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Remember the woman at the well. When Jesus was talking to her, what did he say? Woman, the day is coming. In fact, it is now here where you will not worship on the mountain. You will not worship in the temple because you yourself will become the temple. In other words, the spirit of truth will abide in you. He keeps on saying, you fed me. You quenched my thirst. You clothed me. You welcomed me. You visited me. And both the sheep and the goats ask the same question. When that happened? <laughs> when do we see you there now? They didn't remember Jesus. They didn't recognize Jesus. And you know, there's something very beautiful about that. The sheep were not serving others simply because they're trying to earn their stairway to heaven or, or punch their golden ticket. No, no. The sheep were serving because that's what sheep do. And this is what the man who buried his talent was lacking. This is what the guy at the wedding feast did not have. This is what the five foolish virgins were lacking. The oil, which is the spirit that whispers to you God's will. That quiet voice that is whispering to you all the time. My friend, if you never, ever hear that quiet voice whispering to you, well, then you're a goat, period. And in just the same way, if you do hear the quiet voice whispering to you the next right thing to do, and you're ignoring the quiet voice, you don't follow the quiet voice, then you're a sheep that's trying its best to be a goat. And go easy on that one, my friend, because you just might get your wish. When we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, are those just words? Or are we getting his will done in our lives. My friends, hear me when I say, the day is coming when we will all be held accountable for what we did in this life. And I'm not exactly sure what that would look like. I imagine in my mind's eye like a large stately room, a lot of, a lot of marble, sort of like a courtroom. And I'm led before the throne of judgment. And the prosecution begins. Diablo will be there. Oh, yeah. And he'll say, roll the tape. And the movie of my life will be played. And this movie will show the good, the not so good, the bad, the ugly, and the real ugly. I, I remember... When I played football in high school, and I was no good. I was no good at football. I didn't want to hit anybody, okay? But anyway, I was big, right? So I was on the team. And anyway, we, we used to watch the game film every week. And if I missed a block that caused the quarterback to get sacked or maybe a long play to happen, the coach would always pause the tape. He'd pause the film and he'd say, yeah, look at Engler. And he, he would play, play it back and forth a few, few times just to kind of rub it in, you know? I see Satan there. I see him doing that kind of thing. And after the movie's done, silence. And a voice from the throne will cry. And how do you plead? And I'm going to have to say, guilty, Your Honor. Guilty as charged. And the voice will say, the wages of sin are death. Period. And that is true, my friend. The wages of sin is death, period. And as the bailiff comes to take me away to my rightful place, I will have no one to blame. I knew. I wasn't tricked. This was not a misunderstanding. And as I'm being led away to a fate that I so deserve, my Lord, my Savior, 
is going to step out of the crowd and say, Father, this one is mine. Oh yeah, this one is mine. Every day in this country, somebody does something nice for somebody else. Today, why don't you let that somebody be you? This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. Hope you can come back next week and we'll do it again. Until then, I hope you let God live in your life. And I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living with Father Chapin. Want to thank you for watching a broadcast. I get letters just about every day from all over. Maybe it's a prisoner in Hagerstown, Maryland. Or maybe it's a family out in David, Arizona. Or maybe it's as far as Santa Fe, California. And they're all being fed. If you feel like you're being fed by daily living, I would ask you to consider a monthly gift to help me keep on the air. You know, we are 100% privately funded. A monthly gift to Daily Living at 181 St. Brendan Way, Elkins, West Virginia, 26241. I will send you a monthly newsletter, a small gift of appreciation, and if you send me an email address, I will send you a script of the show prior to its broadcasting. You can also go to the website, mydailyliving.com, and donate on PayPal. Once again, thank you for watching the show.